This video contains spoilers for episode 9 of Fiona and Cake. You have been warned. Casper and Nova is the second to last episode of the Fiona and Cake series. So let's just jump right into it and I'm not crying, you are. Right off the bat, you may notice that this intro looks a little familiar, but different at the same time. It looks very reminiscent of the original title cards that we saw for each episode of Adventure Time. And the reason why that's different is because for Fiona and Cake, we've never seen this type of title card yet. And these last two episodes both have it. Next up is this blue butterfly that wakes up Fiona. Now remember, this is right after Fiona and Cake jumped back into Simon's head. But what's different and familiar yet again is that blue butterfly. It looks very similar to that same blue butterfly that woke up Cake in episode 3, Cake the Cat. But something's different about it. It doesn't have that same smiley face. We also saw this butterfly in the end credits of episode 2, Simon Petrikov, sitting on top that same bone mask that that bear wore. But if you notice, this blue butterfly that we see in episode 9, waking up Fiona, looks a little different. It's blue, but it doesn't have that face, which is our first look that something might be off. Then we see some brand new gender bent characters from Ooh that we've never seen before, like Mrs. Cupcake and the gender bent version of Chocoberry. We also see a statue that looked pretty similar to Betty's statue in episode 1 of Fiona and Kate, Fiona Campbell. But this time, it's standing on top of something. And that's something looking pretty similar to the helmet that Grob God Glob God wore. But the reason why the Betty statue is standing on top of it is because that was the item that sent Betty down the rabbit hole to turn into Gold Betty in the the first place. Remember back to the episode You Forgot Your Floaties. Betty was tracking down this helmet in order to transfer Magic Man's magic into her, which then led to a ton of other events, but ended up with Betty fusing with Golb and turning into Gold Betty. So the helmet, in a way, kind of started this whole thing. Also, these fairies that we see here are from the episode The Enchiridion from Season 1. Remember, when they threatened those old ladies. But then these mushroom fairies that we see off to the right were the same mushroom fairies that we saw in Episode 2 of Fiona and Cake. Simon Petrikov. Then we get our first official look at the gender bent Huntress Wizard. Yes, we've gotten a look at the gender bent version of Huntress Wizard in human form, but not in her magical form from the land of Ooh. And this is the first time we see that. Next up, we see the gender bent version of the dragon that we first saw in the episode Memories of Boom Boom Mountain. Remember, the dragon that was complaining that his bottom itches, but then got it fixed by rubbing it on those cactus's thorns. Then we see a big cyclops creature, which could be two things, or a combination of them both. It first looks like one of those Cyclops that we see in the episode City of Thieves. The main reason I say that is because the Cyclops in the City of Thieves episode has that same band around his arm that this one does in episode 9 of Fiona and Cake. But it also kind of looks like the forest Cyclops that we see in the episode Another Way, most notably with the mossy features on its head and shoulders. LSP's back still hanging around with her squirrel friends, the same squirrel friends that we saw in episode 1 of Fiona and Cake. What's really funny is that one of the first promotions arts for Fiona and Cake used this screenshot from episode 9, the second to last episode of the entire series. And this was one of the first, if not the first, promotional art done for Fiona and Cake way before it came out. Now, remember what I said in the beginning, that something doesn't seem off in this world. And sure enough, it isn't. Gary is all sorts of messed up. This is not the Gary that Fiona and Cake knows. And then they spot Marsha Lee, and Marsha Lee's character design for this distorted look is so scary. Something's definitely not right. Now with LSP's insides being spaghetti and the squirrels eating it, these same squirrels that he was just hanging out with, except one thing to notice, these squirrel designs are different from literally how we just saw them. This is now the same squirrel design as the squirrel that we saw in the episode Up a Tree and the episode Cake the Cat from Fiona and Cake. But the icing on the cake showing us that this world is definitely off is the stuffed, distorted Simon slash Ice King body in Fiona's freezer. And this design is creepy and scary too. But one thing to notice, if you zoom in on the left side of the screen, you see the hot dog night dead. And this was referencing the episode Cake the Cat from Fiona and Cake, where Cake literally transformed one of the hot dog nights into a normal hot dog. But what was so off about this universe anyway? Well, it turns out it was just a bad dream that Fiona and Cake both shared. Now, let me remind you again, this is after Fiona and Cake jumped back into Simon's mind and hoping that their world would go back to magical after Simon put back on the crown. But if you notice 
Fiona's reaction after learning that it was just a dream and that her world is back to normal, she seems somewhat relieved, which is heavy foreshadowing for the finale, episode 10, Cheers. But don't worry, we won't get into that. There's two characters on the ice rink that you might recognize. The first being Flannel Boxing Day, with his iconic pinkish skin and that white mustache. But the second being Tiffany. Now, they both share blonde hair, but you might think this is a little bit of a stretch. But if you zoom in real close, you notice the shirt that this gender-bent Tiffany is wearing underneath. And it's the same iconic pink shirt that Tiffany wears from Adventure Time. Now remember, Fiona hasn't caught up with Marshall Lee and Gary since she texted Gary all the way back in episode 5, The Winter King. So she is so shocked to see them together, but very happy for them. But if you notice the shirt that Marshall Lee is wearing, it's a reference to the very shirt that Marceline gave Princess Bubblegum all those centuries ago at her concert. You know, also the same one that Princess Bubblegum sacrificed in order to save Hambo from Marceline. Also, Cake reveals that she's magical to Marshall Lee and Gary. But where's Simon and the Lich, you might say? Well, Simon finally pulled off the ritual and opened a portal to gold and the Lich did join in. Now, in the episode Whispers from Season 9, the Lich tells Finn that he was the last scholar of gold, and we find out in this episode that that's indeed true. The Lich looked up to Gold and tried to do everything in accordance to what Gold would want by killing everyone in his universe. And in doing this, it actually did make the Lich depressed, which I know I said he wasn't in the last video. I said that the Lich just didn't have a purpose anymore and that he wasn't depressed, but those really go hand in hand, and you can just tell by the tone of the Lich's voice that he is indeed a little depressed. And now the Lich starts to get a little angry because Golb isn't acknowledging the Lich whatsoever. Which really makes you think, does Betty have some control over Golb? Was the Lich looking up and studying Golb before Betty? Would the original Golb, before Betty fused with him, have acknowledged the Lich here? Or does Betty remain in some control of Golb? Well, we'll come to find out that Betty might have some control over Golb, but a huge bombshell is revealed when we find out how these geometric shapes floating around Golb and Golb Betty's head came to be, as we see when the Lich gets torn apart and turned into one of these geometric shapes. It turns out Golb, and now Gold Betty, has the power to turn anybody into one of these shapes. So it makes you wonder, who were these people that are now floating around Golb's head? Were they all scholars of Golb? Were they just people who Golb or Gold Betty disliked? Are these the inhabitants of the universe that Golb swallowed in Pahoy? That's the real big question. Who were these geometric shapes? Because we know now that one of them is the Lich, but no other one. Back to Simon though, and remember how he has felt throughout this entire series so far. That he's not important, doesn't have a purpose, and doesn't really matter at all. We saw this a lot in episode 2, Simon Petrikov, with him literally not fitting in with anybody around him. Not being magical, and not fitting in with these new age humans. But because Simon, Fiona, and Cake have gone on all of these adventures across all these different universes, they've come to grow a really strong bond. And Simon finally has a purpose, to save Fiona and Cake's world, and return turn its magic by putting on the crown, which was his original plan from the start, which was revealed at the end of episode 4, Prisma of the Wishmaster. However, his first plan way back then felt a little different. Simon's intentions to return magic to Fiona and Cake's world by putting on the crown again was because he didn't feel important. At that moment in time, he felt that it would almost be better to be Ice King because at least he could be magical. But now, even though his plan is the same, to put on the crown and return magic back to Fiona and Cake's world, his mindset is totally totally different. He's not doing it because he doesn't feel important. He's doing it because he feels important. He finally has a purpose now. He grew this bond with Fiona and Cake so much across the series that he will become the Ice King again for them. Not just because he doesn't feel important or doesn't belong. But as soon as he's about to put on the ground, Gold Betty stops him. And then we see Shermie and Beth. Seeing Shermie and Beth and Fiona and Cake was definitely not on my checklist. But it actually kind of makes sense. Now everything from the trailer of Fiona and Cake we have seen, and almost everything from the intro we've seen, except for that one scene where we see the fern tree 1,000 years in the future. And now we do. Now this entire situation that Shermie and Beth are going through has actually already been seen by none other than Steve Wolfhard, who drew up his own extra lore shortly after the release of Come Along With Me, the Adventure Time series finale. From that extra bit of lore from Steve Wolfhard, he shows that Shermie and Beth were rebels of the Pup Kingdom who was ruled by Gibbon. Now if Gibbon sounds and may look familiar, that's because he 
is. He's Charlie's future son that we see in the episode Daddy Daughter Card Wars. We even see the pups that Steve Wolfhard drew, where most of them got their powers extinguished by Gibbon. That's why Gibbon's a bad ruler and why Beth is rebelling him. It's because Gibbon extinguishes these pups' powers at birth, basically making them normal pups. And that's why Beth still has her powers, because she's a rebel. Speaking of Beth's powers, we see Jake's favorite mug in one of the portal rooms that she uses. Then we find out what Gold Betty did to Simon. She transferred his consciousness into Shermie. As we can see, as Shermie finishes the motion that Simon was just doing by putting on the crown. And also, Shermie's ears flopping down to look more like Simon. Shermie, now being controlled by Simon, screams bread balls, which was used in the episode Simon and Marcy. This also confirms that Betty has somewhat control over Gold, because instead of turning him into this geometric shape, she transfers his consciousness into Shermie, which stops him from putting on the crown. Now, the scare appears to remember he accidentally fell through the portal when Simon first opened it up, and I can't tell if the scarab recognizes or knows who Gold is. It seems like he may, by first being scared by Gold, but then saying to stay out of it, meaning that the scarab knew that Gold might have a reason to step in in the first place. But what's really interesting is when the scarab finally gets to Simon, because remember, the scarab's goal is to destroy the Rogue universe, which is inside of Simon's head. But what's really interesting is that as he goes to destroy Simon, Betty stops the scarab. Betty Gold uses the same yellow flash that she just used on Simon, but the scarab breaks up into all these tiny little bugs. However, the most interesting part is why didn't Gold Betty just transform the scarab into one of those geometric shapes, like she just did with the Lich? This actually might give us a little insight on who these people that were transformed into these shapes might be. There could be a rule that says no other cosmic entities are allowed to be transformed into one of these shapes, which would rule them out, but still, who would these people be then? This again also shows that Betty is in control somewhat by directly protecting Simon. But she doesn't do a good enough job because one of the little scarab bugs ends up slipping inside of Simon's mind, where Fiona and Kig's world are. We also see that the clouds in Fiona's world are the exact same shapes that we just saw surrounding Gold's head, which again shows us that everything Simon experiences somewhat mirrors back in Fiona's world. We saw this a lot throughout the series, but I think the most predominant one was in episode 5, The Winter King, when Simon, Fiona, and Cake were inside of the Winter Kingdom, where it was cold, and in Fiona's world, it started snowing. Gary and Marshall Lee learn of their gender-bent counterparts in the episode The Star and are absolutely horrified, but one of the cutest lines comes from Gary when he says that he would date Marshall Lee even if he was a vampire. Those scarab bugs actually do end up in Fiona's world, using the same blue portal that we have seen throughout episode 1 and 2, and at first, they seem to have a pretty good hold on these bugs, but not for long. Then we see the shop that is selling these icy drinks with Gunter and a Yeti, but this Yeti looks very similar to one of the Yetis from Summer Camp Island, which would make sense because the creator of Summer Camp Island, Julia Pot, worked on a lot of episodes of Adventure Time in Season 9 and Season 10. Not only that, but even one of the Yetis from the show Summer Camp Island clearly references and resembles the Lich, with one of his curly horns intact, but the other one cracked off. We also see a flyer for Superport with the mascot Cheryl. Now, this was from the episode Dark Purple from season 6, and the reason why Cheryl and Superport don't look any different is because Superport was one of the companies that lasted in the post-apocalyptic land of Ooh, but was founded before the Mushroom War started, which would make a lot of sense because before the Mushroom War started, Simon was alive, and Simon, not the Ice King, and we know that Simon listened to Cheers a lot during that time, and that's why we see Cheers totally intact and the same in a few Fiona's world, and that's also why we see Superporp and Cheryl the same. It's because it was a company that was before the Mushroom War. Now these little scarab bugs are coming out of every blue portal in Fiona's world, and we get a cool reference to how we saw Huntress Wizard in the episode The Star, when in that episode, Huntress Wizard sensed that something was off with these humans who were actually vampires. And we get that same sense of danger with this Huntress Wizard in Fiona's world named Hunter. We also see Jake on one of the packages of the food item in the store. Now I don't know if this is just an easter egg or if this means something it doesn't look like it means anything but at this point we are totally left in the dark on what happens with jake and Ooh. am i missing something from this packaging that tells us what happened am i overthinking it am i going crazy please let me know but now we're back in shermie and beth's universe and this brings up a great question for the longest time we thought that shermie and beth's world was just Ooh, 1000 years later but what betty did to simon makes me think otherwise betty zapped simon's consciousness onto 
another universe into Shermi, but does that mean that Shermi and Beth are just another universe and not ooh 1000 years later? Or did she zap Simon's consciousness 1000 years in the future? Anyway, they get to the library and it looks way different. Now did the library just get this amazing renovation or was it always like this? Well, I think it was always like this. We can see the library in Ooh from Adventure Time and it does seem that it was buried with some of the buildings poking up out of the ground. Not only that, but the huge library we now see in episode 9 of Fiona and Cake is inside a giant hole. We can obviously tell with the surrounding walls around it. So whatever caused this hole, which is another question too, what could have caused this hole exposed the entire library and what it was supposed to be. Now the inhabitants of this library are none other than the pagelings, which are now a bit more upgraded. These pagelings are from the episode Paper Pete from season 3 of Adventure Time. They were the secret guardians of the books in the library and they continue to guard the books to this day. But what caused them to get so out of control you may ask? Well we see Turtle Princess's shell, which is now inhabited by a robot, meaning Turtle Princess died, who was the librarian. But Shermie, now Simon, finds the book he's looking for. And it's the same book that Simon showed off in episode 2 of Fiona and Cake, Simon Petrikoff. You can see it's the exact same cover, but the author's name of this book in this universe is a little distorted. So does that mean it wasn't written by Simon? Or it was written by Simon in this universe or in this world? It would seem that he may have because we see the exact same cover that Simon shows off to the humans in episode 2 of Fiona and Cake, Simon Petrikoff, but who knows? Anyways, Prismo is trying to break free, and this tells us that the Scarab didn't neutralize Prismo like he did the other cosmic entities. He just trapped them in this little cube. Such a nice guy. Now, Fiona, Cake, Marshall Lee, and Gary do end up successfully trapping all of these Scarab bugs, and that's when Cake has this great idea. They should just call Simon, because remember, that actually will work, because their phone is interdimensional. It can call anywhere in the multiverse, because the Winter King granted that wish. In episode 6 of Fiona and Cake, the Winter King, he doesn't pick up, but Shermie finally opens this book that presumably this Simon Petrikoff wrote in this universe. And it's a choose your own adventure book, which is important because that means every decision you make will affect the outcome. And that's pretty heavy foreshadowing for episode 10. But again, no spoilers for episode 10. But this choose your own adventure book is about the story of two best friends named Casper and Nova, the title of this episode. Now, they begin their journey lodging in the seaside town of Scandia on their quest to find the crown. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the story of how Simon Petrikov found the ice crown in the first place. Mentioned all the way back in Holly Jolly Secrets Part 2, it showed that years before the Mushroom War, Simon Petrikov purchased the crown in northern Scandinavia. We even see a tiny little gunter on one of the pages in this Choose Your Own Adventure book. Then they hear where the ice crown is located. It's first guarded by a deadly fire tiger who lives atop a volcanic mountain, which is most likely a reference to the very origins of the ice crown. In the episode Evergreen from season 6, it's revealed that the ice crown was created by the ice elemental named Urgence Evergreen, and he got the gems from the crown by slaying the lava dog Magwa inside this volcano. Shermie, possessed by Simon, chooses that path to find the ice crown and ends up dying. He tries to reset the book, but it doesn't work. They get the same outcome. This is pretty heavy foreshadowing, and even Beth says it that there's no do-overs and that all of the actions that you choose affect your future and you can't change it. Even the mindset of Simon, in Shermie's body, of trying to restart and pick a different option after dying in this Choose Your Own Quest book is also pretty heavy foreshadowing for Simon in the next episode. The Scarab breaks free, but not because the Scarab is this all-powerful, almighty being. It's because of LSP, which, if you think about it, LSP was actually doing a good thing. If you were in the shoes of LSP and had no idea what just happened, because all LSP wanted to do was free these trapped bugs that were trapped. But nope, the Scarab combines into one being, as we know, the Scarab. And Fiona's apartment blows up which we saw in the intro sequence, and now we find out how it happened, technically because of LSP. And now the Scarab is free, with his main goal to destroy this rogue universe, which leads us into the final episode of Fiona and Cake. But if you know Fiona and Cake, you would know that this episode technically isn't over yet. There is an Easter egg in every single outro sequence of every episode, where Fiona and Cake dream of something, and that something being different in every single episode. And in this episode, we see a turtle 
turtle with blonde hair, which obviously represents Turtle Princess, the librarian, but we also see three books. The first being named Paper Paul, then Felty to the Thing, and finally Got You, which are all references to Adventure Time episodes. Paper Pete, Loyalty to the King, and Gotcha. Now, I'm off to record the deep dive and analysis of the finale of Fiona and Kay, episode 10, Cheers. And this one might be a long one, so please bear with me. And if you don't want to miss that video, don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you all for watching, and as always, stay adventurous.